the Gnostic Gospels. This is the Folio Society edition. I was looking for a nice hardcover edition of the books, uh, the translations of the texts discovered in Nag Hammadi in 1945, right? Known as the Nag Hammadi Library. And until now, I'd only had a paperback edition, right? Which I'd uh, covered in plastic just for durability, because I, I you know, I tend to, 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 to manipulate these um, books quite a bit. And uh, uh, I've got on very well with this 1990 edition uh, from Harper San Francisco. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, th this, was, this was absolutely fine for me. And this is actually the copy that I keep on my bedside table. Um, uh, however, on my shelf, I wanted something a little bit more presentable uh, than this kind of sun faded. <laughs> a rather battered copy and so I was looking for a nice hardcover edition. This edition by the Folio Society seems to be the nicest one out there. I did a little bit of research and also found one by Eastern Press which looked very pretty on the outside however I was unfortunately assured by uh, people who were more familiar with Eastern Press than I was um, that the insides of their books are often just the paperbacks with pretty co covers added on to them. So uh, I, I didn't really want that. Uh, Folio Society have created something completely fresh here, right? So that it's not just uh, uh, the previous work re, uh, re just <laughs> re-edited or re re printed simply, uh, but they actually have their own translation here, uh, which is very interesting. Um, in fact, I would possibly say that the translation, well, I, I'm going to say that it, the translation has pros and cons. The pros of the translation are that it is read it, readable. Uh, it is really readable. It's very pleasant to read. Um, the uh, I'll sh I'll show you a, a little uh, a comparison with the other uh, version, the other book in a in a few moments with the other edition in a few moments, the nineteen ninety edition. Uh, but uh, but this one, yeah, it's it's very easy to read. Um, but it comes sometimes at the expense of precision. Okay, I think that if you are a scholar wanting to uh, find the um, the the original meanings and looking up the the maybe the the, the nuances in um, uh, in 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 certain words then while this uh, you know as you can see may not be particularly comfortable to read it's a lot closer at, it feels at times uh, to the original text you you can see that this is a literal translation of what was on the page you know these these texts were um, uh, sometimes very well preserved but some of the texts you know you get big chunks missing and so that that really comes across here it doesn't come across quite so much uh, in the folio edition uh, which is which is fine you know it's uh, that there are plenty of uh, of, of notes in the uh, margin that you can see over here, you know, so it, it's, it's certainly not um, uh, note free, you know, it's uh, if if this is your only copy of the Nag Hammadi library, you'll certainly be very, very well served by it. Um, um, but yes, as I say, it feels a little bit more like um, the text is presented in a way to make you feel like you're reading the original text, whereas here you're feeling like you're reading the translation of a, a, a destroyed codex, which is accurate, which is in fact what you're doing here, right? Um, uh, let me let me give you a, a little example of some of the the translations to, to just to give you a feel of how much easier it's going to be to read and just by showing you some of the titles right if we uh, if we go to the page of contents um, uh, the, the first few are identical right the prayer of Apostle Paul the prayer of Apostle Paul right the secret book of James uh, the um, Apocryphon of James so very often this translation this old 1990 translation will choose 
um, Greek words, which may be obscure if you don't know Greek or if Greek is uh, not part of your uh, of your base education, right? Uh, which is the case for most people out there, you know. Um, uh, the tripartite uh, tractate remains the tripartite, where is it? The tripartite tractate, uh, but then, right, the nature of the rulers here, uh, over here, it is the hypostasis of the archons. Now, when I first read the hypostasis of the archons, I, I had no idea what that could possibly refer to, you know, uh, but then digging deeper and, you know, and, and really studying this quite profoundly, I, I, I started to get a picture of what, um, of what the idea of an archon could possibly be and so on, right? Uh, so, so that experience, I suppose, is removed to an extent here. It's, it's, um, it's a much smoother reading experience. It's designed so that people can grasp the meaning much more immediately, you know, much more, much more directly without having to work for it quite as much as I had to work for it uh, back in 2003, 2004, I guess, I was, um, I was studying um, uh, these texts. What I really, really like about this edition, you know, apart from the couple of colour plates that, uh, that I'm showing you here, is uh, the Indis, uh, the the not this uh, not the indices the uh, the appendices, uh, we have four essays here. Uh, the epilogue, <clears throat> the schools of thought in the Nag Hammadi scriptures, is just an introduction to these four essays, where they show us four different philosophies that are represented in the texts of the Nag Hammadi library, and so we get Thomas Christianity the Sethian school of Gnostic thought, the Valentinian school of Gnostic thought, and Hermetic religion. All of these are, are represented here. They, they, there are texts from, <clears throat> uh, from yeah, for, from various places that were just combined and collected in one library, so to speak. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but it wasn't all the work of one person. It was uh, just the same way as the Bible is lots of books that were collected. Uh, this is also lots of books that were collected. And uh, yeah, and so these four essays are fantastic, really, really interesting and worth reading. Uh, and uh, they, they, they give a, a nice idea of, um, of the, the context of, of all of this. So that's really nice. I'll show you the end papers because uh, they're, they're quite lovely. Um, uh, it looks kind of fuzzy, but it's, uh, it's actually a s just smooth, nice, thick cardstock, quite, uh, quite, quite soft actually, but, but definitely not fuzzy in any way. If I show it to you in the light, you'll be able to see that it's, it's, uh, it's actually relatively, well, it's matte, but it is, it is actually very, it's, it's just extremely smooth. Oh dear, what I've just done. <laughs> um, uh, and um, it is Smithsown, naturally. Uh, the, the, the book just falls open, as you can see. It's uh, very pleasant to read, very, uh, uh, just, just like all of Folio Society's books. Folio Society normally, um, uh, well, they, uh, they, they focus on uh, popular, uh, classical uh, fictional books and also on um, uh, non-fiction books that have been influential and this certainly has been influential. Um, uh, they, they also have a, a very nice world religions uh, series and, um, and, um, and history of, uh, of world religions series which is very very cool. The whole thing comes in a slip case. Here we go and it's um, a brown slip case. Mine came a little bit scuffed, which was uh, which I was actually grateful for because it meant that uh, I paid almost retail price for it. And uh, you know, it's really not the, uh, the the slip case that I that I was buying this for. Although it's nice to have a slip case to keep the book um, 
the book uh, was just, just safe and, uh, and in good condition. Um, and what else can I say? The, uh, the spine is this leather. Is it actually leather? Is it faux leather? I, I don't really know. Um, it certainly feels like real leather. Um, uh, and I certainly wouldn't be surprised if it was in fact real leather. Um, <clears throat> and the book is spray painted on the top edge in this, uh, in this brown uh, color. Yeah, so it just uh, um, fits the color scheme of the rest of the book and, uh, and of, the slip, of the slip case. There we are. That's about it, folks. Uh, that's my overview of the Gnostic Gospels by Folio Society. I hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy the review and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. Do check out the details in the pinned comment on how you can help the channel if you're interested in, uh, uh, in helping out basically in any way. And uh, yeah, I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.